The Lord be with you. Be with you. And also with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning, which is the first Sunday of Lent. In today's gospel, we will hear all about Jesus' baptism again, but this time we will also journey with him into the wilderness, um, but we will get to that bit shortly. Let us begin by saying the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom the bits are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen, Lord have mercy. Almighty God. Our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry, repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in years of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the song of the angels. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and, as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us have our, our reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I've set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. 
when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills, that we may serve you today and always. Amen. Amen. At some point, we all leave home. It is something we do throughout our lives. Over and over, we leave home. We've all done it, I'm sure. We leave home physically, emotionally and spiritually. We leave those places that are familiar, comfortable, predictable. Sometimes we can't wait to leave. We're ready to go. Other times we would rather not leave. Sometimes we choose to leave. Other times, the circumstances of life push us out the door. Regardless of how or why it happens, leaving home is part of life. <clears throat> it happens in lots of different ways and times. For children, it might be the first day of school. Young adults move out of their parents' home to start university or go to work. The significant changes of life are forms of leaving home. A marriage, a divorce, the birth of a child, the death of a loved one, new employment or the loss of employment are about leaving home. Moving to a new town, retirement, the loss of health all involve leaving home. The major decisions that bring us to the crossroads of life are also about leaving home. Leaving home can be difficult, frightening and risky. It invites us to change and opens us to new discoveries about ourselves. 
it challenges our understandings of where we find significance, meaning and security. Ultimately though, leaving home is the beginning of our spiritual journey and growth. We are more vulnerable to and in need of God when we leave home. Leaving home is not, however, simply about the circumstances of life. It is the way of God's people. Adam and Eve left the garden. Noah left his dry land home. God told Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Jacob ran away from home, fearing for his life. Moses and the Israelites left their homes in Egypt. And in today's gospel, Jesus is leaving home. As Mark tells it, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee to the Jordan River. He left his home and now stands with John in the Jordan, the border between home and the wilderness. There he is baptised. The heavens are torn apart as we know the spirit like a dove descends and a voice declares, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. From there, the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Baptism may happen in the river, but the baptismal life begins in the wilderness. This story is not, however, just about Jesus. It is our story too. The Father's words refer to Jesus in a uniquely literal way, but they also apply to each one of us. By grace, gift and the choice of God, we are his beloved daughters and sons. If leaving home, getting baptised and going to the wilderness is Jesus' Jesus's way, then it is our way too. We leave behind our old identity. We are identified and claimed by God as his children and we go out into the wilderness. That's what this holy season of Lent is about. It is no coincidence then that on Ash Wednesdays, we are usually, not this year, marked with the ashes of remembrance, the dust of our creation. And then today the gospel takes us to the wilderness. The two cannot be separated. Wednesday's ashes lead us to wilderness soil. Lent is about leaving home and leaving home in Lent and life always takes us to the wilderness. The wilderness is an in-between place. It is a place of liminality, a threshold. We are betwixt and between, neither here nor there. We have left behind what was and what will be is not yet clear. In the wilderness, we come face to face with the reality of our lives, things done and left undone, our fears, our hopes and dreams, our sorrows and losses, as well as the unknown. These facts of our life are the source of our temptations. We tend to externalise temptations and make them about behaviour. Behaviour is important, but the real temptations are from within us, not around us. We are either tempted to believe that we are more than or less than the dust of God's creation, or we are tempted to not trust God's willingness to get his hands dirty in the dust of who we are. The temptations are not really about our behaviour, breaking rules or being bad. God does not tempt us to see if we will pass or fail. The temptations are for our benefit, not God's. They are part of our salvation. We leave home and experience wilderness temptations to discover that our most authentic identity is as, beloved, as, a, as a beloved child of God and our only real home is with God. The wilderness is new territory for us. In the wilderness, the old structures, the ones we left behind, no longer contain, support or define our life. It is not, however, uncharted territory. The way has already been cleared by Jesus. It is the way home, the way to God. We go to the wilderness with the knowledge and confidence that Christ has gone before us. Leaving home is not so much a loss for us, but an opportunity for God. In the wilderness, our illusions of self-sufficiency become surrender to God. Our helplessness opens us to God's grace and our guilt is overcome by God's compassion. That's what happens when we leave home. We can never escape or avoid the wilderness. Like Jesus, we must go through it. We must face the temptations of Satan and be with the wild beasts. Yet we never go alone. The angels that minister to Jesus will be there for us. Remember who you are, is their message. You are a beloved son of God. You are a beloved daughter of God. You are one with whom he is well pleased. 
over and over, they tell us. They remind us, they encourage and reassure us. With each remembrance of who we are, we take another step toward God. That is the way through the wilderness of life. Remembrance after remembrance, step after step. I am a beloved child of God. With me, he is well pleased. Let that become our wilderness mantra. Let those words fill our minds, cross our lips and occupy our hearts. The truth of those words is the way home. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I asked you to profess the faith of the church. Do you believe in and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith during Lent in order to dust off the areas of our lives that may need to be replaced, renewed or refreshed. Strengthen our Bishop and all your church in the service of Christ. Guide your priests to help us to be mindful to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain us in the hope of something new. We are mindful that Christ suffered for all our sins once for all in order to bring you and me closer to God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Shine wisdom and truth down on all authority and direct your light in our world to every nation in the ways of justice and peace. Especially at this time, our healing thoughts turn to those affected by the pandemic in any, any way, and we remain hopeful to meet with others again soon. For a sense of order in the world as protests remain rife, for equality and humanity averting ongoing disasters, also pain and loss in a world known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Father, give us a glimpse of your grace in our interactions with families and friends, and to all our neighbours that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We extend this love into our parish and to those living in Patching Close, Peveril Road, Penova Close, and Pippin Link, Metcalf Way, Mole Close, and Mulberry Road. We pray for all who organise the Zoom coffee mornings on Wednesdays, to all attending the link course online starting next Wednesday evening, and extend thanksgiving to all those who contributed to the Easter Team Food Bank serving those in need and community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. For the sick, the patients of Landy Green Hospital and William McKean, Myra Tyson, Arthur and Doris Pattenden, Bertie, Graham, 
Angela, Bill, Colin, Sharon, Robert, Angie, Bill, Paul, Debbie, Uncle Ted, Jamie, Alison Tucknot, Margaret Fairbrother, Ian Phillips, Ron Binmore, Jill Gustafson, Roy Scarborough, and Maeve Ashun. Give them courage and hope in their time of need and bring them back to health through your divine healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ for the recently departed, Bunty Lyons, Peter Perry, Heather Jezard, Nigel Walder, Joyce Cody, Gladys Bond, and those whose years mind occur at this time, Olaf Twyman, Mar Mar Marion Bowen, Jonathan Strutt, Hilda Friend, William Mays, and Brenda Wilkins. Let the light of their lives burn bright in the hearts and minds of their loved ones, as we will one day surely share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We look for the light in these dark times and await the promises that Lent brings us, whether in our personal observance or in the Lent course study groups. We rejoice in your fellowship and commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. As we hold true to this time as fulfilled and that the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Heavenly Father, accept the prayers left this past week on the fishing net. We pray that you will meet those people at the point of their need. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us the bread of life and cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these 40 days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy, and therefore with all the angels of heaven we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name, and say our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Margaret and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Trusting in God's promise of com compassion, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So saying together, Lord Jesus Christ. You have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters we do also for you. Give us the will to be servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us that are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Before we go for the blessing and the dismissal and then have coffee together. Um, notices this week you will see that the uh, joining details for the Lent course and the coffee morning are as always on the new sheet which is uh, available on the website. Um, do join us if you possibly can for both of those it would be good to see a, fair, a number of you there um, otherwise Jill and I'll just sit and chat to each other um, <laughs> but we hope some people will come and keep us company. Um, you'll notice that Naomi has been incredibly busy and has um, developed the resources or starting to get them already in the hope that she'll get some more take up on them for Easter family fun packs. Um, if you'd like any resources for Holy Week and Easter so that you can celebrate Easter as a family, um, let her know basically and she will either leave it for you, deliver it or um, I don't know, she might, <laughs> she might post it, who knows, she'll get it to you at some, somehow. Um, but thank you for her for sorting that. Um, I think that was all I had to, to, to do and say. Um, certainly all the ones that I knew about before. Um, so, and obviously a big thank you to all for all of the, the lovely pictures we had at the beginning of all of those um, bags ready for uh, the uh, Easter team. Looks like we did another grand job. Let's hopefully keep it going because it, I don't think it's a problem that's going to uh, resolve in the next few weeks, that's for sure. So the blessing. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Be in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.